Joining us now, William Cohen, he's a former Republican congressman and senator who served as defense secretary during the Clinton administration. He sat on the House Judiciary Committee during the Watergate impeachment inquiry and has written stinging Washington Post op-ed aimed at Republicans in the article, very strong article, Mr. Secretary, when will the Republican silence on Trump end? In the article, you write this, among other things. The silence of Republicans today in the face of presidential behavior that is unacceptable by any reasonable standard is both striking and deeply disappointing. How do you explain that silence? I, I explain it by uh, uh, fear, that the Republicans are fearful that if they uh, do anything at, uh, at all contradicts the president or in undercuts his, uh, quote, credibility, uh, that they'll have a primary opponent. Secondly, uh, they may very well agree with him. Whether they're acting out of fear or complicity uh, is, um, is not the question for me. The question is, why aren't they willing to defend the Constitution uh, in face of this fear uh, or in face of their own uh, uh, judgments on this? It's very interesting. Uh, you know, Republican Congressman Justin Amash uh, of uh, Michigan, he's out on a limb by himself. He's the only Republican calling for an impeachment inquiry to begin. But you say that privately you've heard from other Republicans that uh, they agree with him. Uh, they do. Uh, the ones that I've uh, talked with, uh, they express the same sentiments, that uh, this president has uh, engaged in conduct that, frankly, if they would not accept from any other president in the history of this country. If you can imagine Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, uh, anyone else having done any of these, uh, th these things that are dealing with obstruction of justice, obstruction of the investigation itself, uh, they wouldn't have hesitated to, uh, to move to uh, bring an impeachment article. You served on the House Judiciary Committee uh, during the Nixon impeachment inquiry. And when you broke with the Republican Party, you were a Republican Congress. There's a picture of a young William Cohn. <laughs> we're showing our viewers right now. When you broke with your own Republican Party, you thought your career was going to be over. So what advice do you give Republicans right now who think that you know, they, they should begin some sort of impeachment inquiry, uh, but uh, refusing to do so. You weren't elected uh, to simply seek re-election. Your job is uh, one where you took an oath to defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. You have an obligation to hold uh, the president and any other official to the highest standards of a fiduciary. Because when we take uh, an oath to serve the public, only our interests can be at stake here, not... Uh, uh, in terms of serving the public's interest. We cannot act out of self-promotion or act out of self-aggrandizement, self-enrichment. None of that, only for the, um, our interest as serving as fiduciaries. So uh, I, I just think that the, uh, the Republicans have to decide uh, whether they're willing to be uh, defeated. And I think in my own case, uh, I did not expect to come back uh, to the United States Congress. I had a very popular opponent. I had most of the Republicans who had turned against me saying, uh, we will never support you again, until the tapes came out that showed that President Nixon had, in fact, engaged in a massive cover-up. Then the sentiment shifted, uh, and they said, uh, you were right, we were wrong, we should have uh, trusted your judgment. So I would say to other uh, congressmen saying, do what you uh, know is right, what you feel is right. Don't worry about whether you come back or not. That's not your mission. Your mission is to get at the truth and only the truth. As in your article in the Washington Post, uh, you, you point out correctly that the, the, the American public was not on board uh, beginning some sort of impeachment process. When you guys started thinking about that in 1974, you write this. It's also important to remember that public opinion is not anchored in concrete. It shifts according to the information it finds to be persuasive and free of rank partisanship. So you're saying that are you, are you saying right now that you believe Congress should at least begin the process of impeachment? I think inevitably they'll have to. I think that Speaker Pelosi is doing the right thing by saying not yet. There has to be more evidence gathered. There are lots of, uh, lots of testimony that has to be in, incorporated uh, as they proceed. But I think it's inevitable. The question is one of timing. Is it better to proceed now with impeachment uh, or do it later? Uh, my own recommendation would be sooner is better than later. But it, it's going to require bringing witnesses in and having live testimony, uh, having the public understand what uh, Mr. Mueller has said. And as uh, he indicated yesterday, you know, read the report, but present it to the American people so they know what it says. Most people have not read the, uh, his book. And it's a textbook. 
Uh, and people don't read textbooks today for the most part, unless you're a professional such as you and, and other uh, uh, media uh, individual. But it's there to be read. It's there to be presented to the American people. On a very other issue, a very sensitive issue, the late Senator John McCain, you and Senator McCain were very close uh, over many years. Uh, what's your reaction when you heard this report that some White House officials wanted the USS John S. McCain far away from the president during his recent visit uh, to Japan because they thought it would upset him? Well, I think, first of all, it was petty on their part and rather pathetic, given who John McCain uh, is or was and represents to this day to this country. Uh, the fact that anyone in the White House would feel that the president doesn't want to see his name under any circumstances. Now, I assume the president didn't know about this. I give him uh, you know, benefit of, of the doubt here that uh, he was unaware of it. But also know the fact that uh, it, it comes from the top. And as Michael Cohen said, everybody knows what he wants, even if he doesn't say it. And I believe that he uh, did not want to see uh, John McCain's name on that ship, John S. McCain, for the father and, and grandfather, basically, uh, rather than John, who was added uh, uh, ultimately. But he didn't want to see that, and he was glad he didn't. So I think it comes from the top. He sets the mood. He sets the tone. They know what he wants, and they're doing it. I think the military ought to be held accountable for saying, who authorized this and why did you do it? Because one thing we don't want to see is the military being politicized. Uh, either people wearing uh, the uh, Make America Great hats, patches, they are uh, not uh, President Trump's military. He likes to say, it's my military. No, it's America's military. And they shouldn't be uh, pro or anti-Trump or uh, any other individual. They serve the American people, and they're to not be uh, exploited uh, for political purposes. But this is very personal. You served as, correct me if I'm wrong, best man at yeah. Senator McCain's uh, wedding with Cindy McCain. Uh, and so yeah. you have a long-standing friendship uh, with the late senator. Uh, when, what did you think of the way the president when he was asked about this today, responded, and he keeps pointing out, even though Senator McCain has passed away, he keeps pointing out how, how he disagreed with him on health care, on the war in Iraq, and other issues. Well, he also continues to say he was no hero. Anyone who knows uh, John McCain knows about him. Uh, there's no question he was a hero of tremendous um, um, proportions. And also the fact that John was a hero on a global scale. Uh, whether you were talking about Japan or China or any other place, they looked to him as a man of great courage who would uh, endure tremendous personal suffering and still not yield his place in going back to the United States. That takes a real hero. It takes real courage. And I think when the president is unable to have even a grace note, uh, a note that says, yes, he was a hero. I disagree with him. He, I, I regret the fact that he voted against me, but we ought to uh, raise up and say, John McCain, you served this country nobly. You served it well. Uh, and uh, even though I disagree with you, uh, I'm proud of the service that you rendered to this country. That's all he has to say and show that he has some note of grace in his, uh, in his soul. Secretary Cohen, thanks very much for coming in. My pleasure.